Ruth's Christmas by Abby Phillips Walker. Read in English. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 1. There was just one thing that Ruth wanted for Christmas, and that was a mother. Her father had smiled and then had looked sad when she told him, Daddy, I want a mother for a Christmas present, one just like the children in the next house have. She tucks them in bed at night and she tells them stories. I can see her from my window. I hide behind the curtains after nurse puts me to bed and watch, and sometimes, when the windows are open, I can see her telling them stories. Won't you please, Daddy dear, give me a mother for a Christmas present? Mothers are not easy to get, her father explained. But, Daddy, you are rich and you can buy anything. I heard Nurse tell Cook you were, said Ruth. Mothers can't cost so much, for lots of poor children have them. You try and think of something else, said her father. I can't explain, but a mother is something you cannot buy. Can't you? asked Ruth. Then how do children get mothers? Do they find them? Yes, I think they do, said her father, glad to end the questioning. This, however, did not end Ruth's thinking or wishing for a mother for her Christmas present. And one day, when the nurse was busy talking with Cook in the kitchen, Ruth slipped out of the door to look for a mother. A long, long distance she walked, and by and by she came to a house with flowers growing in little brown pots in the window. Ruth stopped and opened the gate to the yard and walked in. She did not see a button to push, and as that was the only kind she knew about that made a bell ring, she did the next best thing. She turned the knob of the door. The door swung open, and then someone opened the door in the hall, and Ruth saw a sweet-faced lady standing there. She was not quite as young as Ruth had pictured the mother she wanted should be, but still she liked her face. "'I haven't any mother. I'm looking for one,' said Ruth between the bites and drinks. "'Daddy said he couldn't buy me one, that children found their mothers.' The pretty lady laughed, and then she hugged Ruth closer to her. "'But tell me where you live, dear. Your father will be worried. He will think you are lost,' she said. "'I live in a big house, very much bigger than this,' said Ruth. "'But it is not so pretty inside. We haven't any flowers growing in little bowls like yours. Can you tell me a story?' "'Yes, baby, I can tell you a story.' said the pretty lady, and I will, if you will tell me your daddy's name so we can find him. Oh, his name is just Daddy, said Ruth. But what do other people call him? asked the lady. Nurse calls him Sir, and so does James, said Ruth. Please tell me a story. Are you anybody's mother? she asked, looking alarmed. Oh, dear, no laughed the pretty lady. "'Then it is all right if you can tell a story,' said Ruth. "'What is all right, dear?' asked the pretty lady. "'Why, you're my Christmas present,' said Ruth. "'You can be my mother, can't you? You don't belong to anybody else.' Ruth snuggled close, and the pretty lady began to tell once upon a time, and soon Ruth was sound asleep in the pretty lady's arms. When Ruth awoke, the pretty lady still held her, and for fear it all might be a dream, Ruth kept her eyes closed and lay very still. The pretty lady was talking to her mother. "'Don't you worry, mother dear,' she was saying. "'I'll find work somewhere. I know someone must need me, or I would not be in need of work.' "'But you will not have any Christmas at all, my dear.' and I can't bear to think that I cannot give you a present or cook you a Christmas dinner, said the sweet-faced lady. There is just one way we can have a dinner. I have the pearl earrings. 
your father's last gift to me, and I had always thought of you wearing them on your wedding day. We will sell them, and then we can have a dinner and have some money left. It can't be done, Mother Darling, said the pretty lady, and Ruth felt her sob as she tried to keep from crying. There are no stores open where we could sell them. It is too late in the day. Now, don't you worry about me. We will have the nicest dinner tomorrow you ever ate. I'll make a salad of what we have, and we will have popcorn, and I think we can have some fudge. But, mother, we must find the father of this baby. And how are we going about it? She does not know where she lives. Ruth had opened her eyes now, for she felt somehow her new friends were in trouble though why so pretty a lady should want to find work, Ruth could not think. "'I'll show you where I live,' said Ruth. "'You pack your trunk and call for the car, and we will go home now I have found a mother.' "'We will take the trunk later,' said the pretty lady, laughing. "'And I am afraid, Ruth dear, we will have to walk. You see, I have no car.' Just then Ruth looked out of the window. "'Oh, there is my daddy!' she cried, running to the door. "'Daddy, daddy!' she called. "'Come in here. I have found a mother.' The pretty lady's cheeks grew pink and then red. "'Don't tell him about that,' she said to Ruth. "'We'll keep it a secret.' Ruth's father soon had her in his arms and was asking how she came to be so far from home and the pretty lady and her mother told him how Ruth had come to the door, and that they could not find out who she was or where she lived. "'And so Miss Mary and I were going to walk home when I saw you,' said Ruth, "'and she is going to bring her trunk after a while.' "'Oh, yes, I had to tell her that to satisfy her,' explained Miss Mary. "'She wanted me to come to live at her house.' "'Daddy, they had no car,' said Ruth. "'And Miss Mary wants to go to work.' Miss Mary's face grew red again, and this time the face of the mother flushed. "'It is true I do need work,' said the pretty lady. "'But as yet I have not found anyone who wanted such work as I can do.' "'Perhaps I can help you,' said Ruth's father. "'What sort of work can you do?' "'I thought of office work and bookkeeping. I wanted to teach.' "'But there is no opening at present,' said Miss Mary. "'Why not teach Ruth? "'I shall have to look for someone next year anyway, "'and you two could be getting acquainted before that time,' said Ruth's father. "'But my mother, I could not leave her alone. "'I should have to go home at night,' said Miss Mary. "'Daddy, Miss Mary can tell stories just like a mother,' said Ruth. I want her to tuck me in at night just like the mother in the next house does. They all laughed at this, and Ruth's father said, I guess we can arrange that by taking your mother along too. I need a housekeeper the very worst way. Before Ruth and her father left that afternoon, it was arranged that Miss Mary and her mother should take Christmas dinner with them the next day. But before it was time for them to come, a big box was left at the door, and in it were two nice coats with fur collars, gifts from Ruth to Miss Mary and her mother. On the way home, Ruth had told her father all she had heard when Miss Mary and her mother were talking, and about the shabby coat Miss Mary had worn. Although it was hard work for Miss Mary to keep Ruth from talking about a mother by making Ruth think it was their secret and that she must not tell, her father heard only of the secret that she and Miss Mary had. But one day he asked about this wonderful secret, and Ruth told him she wanted Miss Mary for her mother, that she had found her. He told her children found their mothers, and why couldn't she have Miss Mary for hers? "'Go ask her and see what she says,' said her father. And so Ruth did, and her father came into the room just as she finished the question. "'What is your answer?' asked Ruth's father. 
Miss Mary turned pink, and then her cheeks grew red, and Ruth said, "'You're my mother, aren't you, Miss Mary? I found you, and Daddy told me that was the way children got their mothers. Please, Miss Mary, say yes.' "'Yes, please do, Mary,' said Ruth's father. And Miss Mary said, "'Well, as you both urge me so, I will say yes.' And then Ruth's father kissed Miss Mary and Ruth, and Ruth kissed Miss Mary, and they all lived happy ever after. End of Ruth's Christmas by Abby Phillips Walker Recorded by Ruth Golding, Christmas 2012